Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Word of the Day podcast. If you were looking for someone to pleasantly explain a useful word, you have come to the right place, and I hope the right person. I'm your host, Jamie Silva, and it's time to delve right into today's word, which is methinks. This is one of those old-timey words that has fallen into disuse in recent years, or perhaps decades, maybe centuries, but its meaning is extremely simple. Broken down, methinks is composed of two parts, me and thinks. Thus, it should be no surprise that when you put the two together, it's just another way of saying, I think. So the sentence, I think it's going to rain, is the same as, methinks it's going to rain. Super straightforward. I must give one word of caution about the pronunciation, though. Do not emphasize the me in methinks. Don't say something like, me thinks a tuna sandwich would hit the spot right now. I mean, that might be acceptable and kind of cute if you're under the age of five, but after that, it just sounds like you don't have the faintest grasp of grammar. And you probably also say stuff like, me wants to go to the park, and me likes sing-along cartoons. These are, of course, wildly incorrect and silly-sounding phrases. Yet, somehow, by saying methinks instead of me thinks, you suddenly sound uh, distinguished, maybe even pretentious. And in fact, a lot of the times when you see this written, especially if it's part of dialogue and the speaker is British, the E will be straight up replaced by an apostrophe to emphasize that when you say it, there isn't really a vowel there at all. And the word is almost reduced to one syllable. I don't know that you have to go that far, just as long as you don't say, me thinks. Now, I've come all this way without telling you what the online definition of me thinks is, so let's check in on that. Quote, it seems to me, unquote. Well, I'm going to have to disagree with this definition very strongly. Granted, the phrase, it seems to me, is very close to the phrase, I think, but there is another word, sort of a cousin of me thinks, that already means it seems to me. And this word, logically, is misseems. So, if you want to specifically say, it seems to me, and you want to say it in an antiquated way, go ahead and say, misseems. I see no need to take away from the excellence and uniqueness of methinks by pretending it has the exact same meaning as misseems. And this is why I can say with certitude and authority that the official definition may be close, but it's wrong. And this really all goes to show you that you just hey, can't trust hey, dictionaries. Hey, hi everyone. They're uh, out to get you. Jamie here. They're riddled well, with errors and Well, technically you're still hearing me fade out in the background, but this voice belongs to a new, more informed, slightly abashed Jamie, who, after writing the previous paragraph, uh, did some investigation into the etymology and origin of methinks, And would you believe it, it comes from an old English word, like very old, one that has letters I've never seen before, but seems to have been roughly pronounced thinkin'. And contrary to how it sounds, that old English word did not mean think. It meant seem. And by putting me in front of it and changing the ending a touch, it became me thinkth, uh, translated it seems to me. And after a couple centuries of think coexisting with the totally separate English word think, enough people understandably confused the two or thought they were the same. And so they actually merged into one word, methinks. But because language doesn't always make sense, methinks kept the it seems to me meaning of that old English word methinks which I realize just sounds like I'm saying uh, methinks with a lisp, but it really is a a separate word, and and spelled very differently, M-E-T-H-Y-N-C-T-H. Now, despite my having to issue this correction, it is still true that misseems is a real word, and it also means it seems to me. And theoretically, you could say, misseems this Starbucks is too crowded, let's go to the one across the street instead. But I don't think you should, honestly. Uh, Methinks is already about as quaint and archaic a word as I'll permit on this show, and misseems absolutely crosses that line. Like, there are some words out there that, no matter how fun and charming they might be, I'm not going to recommend that you use them. And remember, this show is all about words that you can actually use. For some words, though, their time has passed, and it's okay to leave them in the linguistic dustbin of history. That's why I don't feature words like quoth, which used to be a past tense of the word say. And in fact, the famous line from Edgar Allan Poe's poem The Raven, which goes, quoth the raven nevermore, uh, if Mr. Poe weren't being so poetic, he could have just written, the raven said nevermore. Quoth does still mean this, but I don't think anyone can use it today in normal conversation with a straight face. And it's the same thing for misseems. 
Methinx, however, has survived. It is still perfectly okay and normal to use, and you can absolutely toss it around if you like, even in business settings. Now, a quick and very basic word about usage for Methinx. As I hinted at the outset, you can say this literally wherever you would say, I think. And also, as we now know, uh, wherever you would say, it seems to me. I think that Methinx, uh, excuse me, Methinx that the word Methinx lends your speech an air of thoughtfulness, of sophistication, that phrases like, I think, or, in my opinion, lack. I've also always thought of Methinx as being rather British, because it's common in many works of British origin, especially those set in older times like Robin Hood, King Arthur, uh, the Canterbury Tales. In particular, Methinx is inescapable in Shakespeare's plays and poems, where it appears over 150 times. Here are just a few examples drawn from circumstances both tragic and comic. First, from Romeo and Juliet, quote, Oh look, methinks I see my cousin's ghost. Next, from A Midsummer Night's Dream, I must be off to the barbers, methinks I am marvelous hairy about the face. From King Lear, Give me your hand, far off, methinks I hear the beaten drum. From Henry the Sixth. Had he been taken, we should have heard the news. Had he been slain, we should have heard the news. Or had he escaped, methinks we should have heard the happy tidings of his good escape. And most famously from Hamlet, the lady doth protest too much, methinks. The context where this pops up within the play is a little too complicated to explain here, but the phrase has lived on to this day, usually in the slightly adapted form, methinks thou dost protest too much. Basically, this means that if someone is stating an opinion incredibly strongly, or is defending themselves against an accusation very adamantly, they may be overcompensating for the fact that they aren't telling the truth, or that they have something to hide. Basically, they're trying too hard, which an honest and forthright person would have no need to do. So, imagine I said something like, Are you accusing me of leaving my socks on the floor instead of putting them in the laundry hamper? I wouldn't dream of such a thing. What an outlandish notion. I never leave my dirty clothes laying around. I don't now, and I haven't once in my entire lifetime. And as a matter of fact, I don't even own socks. I only wear slippers or flip-flops, so those couldn't possibly be mine. Right, so the fact that I'm going to such great lengths here to deny any fault kind of hints at the possibility that the socks are indeed mine, and I'm just so embarrassed or unwilling to admit this that I give this way over-the-top defense. And thus, whoever I am giving this defense to could justifiably say, Methinks thou dost protest too much. I.e., it seems to me you're being way too insistent about this, and that's pretty suspicious. Let's close with just a couple more examples that don't come from Shakespeare. Example number one. Methinks a blizzard is coming, said Jeb, fidgeting nervously with his lasso. We'd better herd the cattle into the barns for shelter. Example number two. These budget projections are very welcome news, methinks, mused Fred. This definitely frees up financial space for pizza. Notice, by the way, that in these examples, as with the others in this show, uh, you can put the methinks either at the beginning of an opinion or observation, or at the end. Either one is fine. Okay, that will do it for us. That will do it for today's show. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, you might also enjoy liking and following our Facebook page, which you should be able to easily find on Facebook by searching for the Word of the Day podcast. You can get updates about the show there, as well as neat little captioned photos and images that help bring the words that we feature to life. And as always, if you have any friends or family who, it seems to you, would enjoy this humble program, take a moment to say to them, hey, methinks you would enjoy the Word of the Day podcast. Thanks to this unimaginably informative and superlatively entertaining show, I now say methinks all the time. Okay, thank you as always for tuning in. This has been the Word of the Day podcast. I'm Jamie Silva, and we'll see you next time.